do you think Epstein killed himself? To me, that's kind of like a red herring, because the most important thing with Epstein is that the government is covering up child trafficking, and all these perpetrators have molested all these little girls with impunity. And I think that his death is a way to steer people away from that. One more question before we kind of move on to P. Diddy. Do you think Epstein killed himself? In the Franklin scandal, there were two primary pimps. There was Lawrence E. King, and he kept his mall shut, did 10 years, and then he had a no-show job waiting for him at a BMW dealership in uh, Alexandria, Virginia. And then there was Craig Spence, who was really the blacks, the, the blackmail side of things. And the thing about Epstein and Spence, once you're, there was so much media on Epstein that he could not be a blackmail artist. If everybody knows that he's, that is, that is how homes are equipped with audiovisual surveillance and he's got young girls, I mean, People are not going to wander into that honey trap. And the same thing happened with Spence. But, but both of them had a tremendous amount of media on them. Now, Spence killed himself. People think that he was suicided, I think. My take on Spence is that he was given the choice. Either you can kill yourself or we can kill you. And he checked into the Boston Ritz, and he wore a tuxedo, and he took an overdose of nortripoline, which is an uh, antidepressant. And, um, and then he had a clipping next to him about CIA agents being called before government bodies to testify because he was called before a grand jury to testify. I think he ducked it. Um, I don't know whether or not he was part of that grand jury. And I think Epstein, the same thing happened with Epstein, that he had become too... Uh, there was just too much notoriety on him. And he, you think he got the choice? I think so. You think they relaxed the security so that he could make that decision himself? Yeah, I mean, the thing about Epstein, I, like, I've had some networks call me, like Vice called me and said, we'd like to talk to you about whether or not Epstein killed himself. And I said, to me, that's kind of like a red herring because the most important thing with Epstein is that the government is covering up child trafficking and all these perpetrators have molested all these little girls with impunity. That is the most important thing. And I think that his death is a way to steer people away from that. Hmm. So, I mean, with Epstein... If he didn't kill himself, I'm sure he had some help. But well, I mean, I think it's an important part of the discussion because it shows how corrupt our government is, correct? And 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 what they will do to to keep this from seeing the light of day. Well, William Barr was and the to attorney keep general. themselves from being prosecuted. It's uh, William Barr was the attorney general under. Uh, Trump that covered all this up. And that guy is really dirty. Your viewers, Google William Barr, and there's going to be a lot of dirt that comes up about William Barr. And what's really interesting about William Barr is the Franklin scandal was covered up by the Bush One administration, that network. And Richard Thornburg was the attorney general and William Barr was the number two guy. And that, and then ultimately Richard Thornburg went to run for Senate in Pennsylvania and then William Barr became the attorney general. And he covered the Franklin network up. There were two federal grand juries that covered the Franklin network, one in Nebraska and one in Washington, DC. And then lo and behold, he's Trump's attorney general covering up the Epstein network. And it's really interesting because Donald Barr, William Barr's father, hired Jeffrey Epstein in 1974 to teach at Dalton School. 
And Epstein was not qualified. He, he was a college dropout. And Dalton is one of the most exclusive preparatory schools in the world. And what's, what I found, okay, so I was looking through, um, Interlochen is like an art school in Northern Michigan. And they have a summer camp. And I've got a picture of Epstein. And, and this is weird. It's a yearbook, but it doesn't have any names. But there's a picture of Epstein, a young Jeffrey Epstein in 1967. And then there's someone that looks like William Barr or a doppelganger of William Barr attending that camp that year. And your viewers can go to my website and I show the pictures. And then I just suppose the picture of what I, who I believe is the young William Barr with the old William Barr. Now, Interlochen has said that William Barr didn't attend uh, that, that camp, but it couldn't say that Epstein didn't attend the camp because Epstein gave them $500,000 to build the Epstein Lodge, which is no longer the Epstein Lodge. But it's interesting. So there are those two pictures, and then seven years later, Barr's father hires Epstein to be to work at uh, at Dalton School. And I don't know if he molested any girls there, but he was certainly, in a, according to what I've read, he was very inappropriate. Epstein? Yeah, with some of the girls there. Man, this shit just keeps getting deeper and deeper. Well, it's, I mean, that's why... I formed Epstein Justice. I have seen these pedophile networks at work. I've seen them covered up. I've done two podcasts on the snow killings, which it was a huge pedophile network. And uh, Francis Sheldon was a wealthy guy and he ran it. And he bought an island. This was like an Epstein Island before Epstein, and this was in the 70s. He bought an island and had a, a runway built, and he would fly kids to the island where they'd get molested and, and he'd make child pornography. And there were four kids that were dumped on, on highways or, or roads um, within a, like a 11-month period of time. And I think that there were a number of pedophiles in that network that definitely knew about it and probably participated in, in killing all of them. The, 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 uh, the, the killings were pinned on Christopher Bush, and Christopher Bush ostensibly committed suicide, but there was no blood splatter. I mean, the whole thing was, it was really poorly staged as far as, like, suicide. It was kind of a ramshackle exploit. But there's that network. Francis Sheldon, nothing ever happened to him. I mean, he went to Amsterdam, and then he ultimately ended up at an orphanage in India where he could molest kids to his heart content. There's the Franklin Network. There's Epstein Network. I mean, all these networks have been covered up. Man. And we, we as Americans... I mean, they're... they're all of these networks. I mean, we did. Did you watch that movie, The Sound of Freedom, by chance? Yes. I interviewed Jim Caviezel. Uh huh. They took it down. They took the video. Had like, I just looked it up. You had like 1.8 million views. Pulled it. Just like, no warning, no nothing. Too much traction on this subject. No reasoning. They just pulled it down. I mean, that. So with Epstein, Alexander Acosta was the U.S. attorney for the District of Southern Florida, and he had a list of 36 Epstein victims. I have the list, and he was going to impanel a grand jury to go after Epstein, but he was told to stand down because Epstein was intelligence. And, and I believe that constitutionally there are only two people that can tell a U.S. attorney to stand down. One is the president, one is the attorney general. 
I mean, the message can be delivered by the president or the attorney general, but it has to emanate from one of those two positions. So that is very telling of how much power is there to cover up Epstein. According to state and federal law enforcement, not a single child was molested by the pimps that ran the Franklin scandal. Not a single child. And then when you get into the snow killings, it gets kind of mind boggling because there's a number of people, there were pedophiles that were arrested and polygraphed about the snow killings and a bunch of them came back negative or a bunch of them came back that they were lying about that. And then there was mitochondrial DNA found in someone's car of one of the kids. But after Christopher Bush was ostensibly committed suicide, that was it. That was the end of the investigation. That, that a task force was formed and they, they didn't make one arrest. Man. So this is something that we have to take care of. Last time I talked about, last time I was here, the CDC, Centers for Disease Control, says that 25% um, of underage, girl, underage girls have been molested and 5% of underage boys. Now, most people believe that underage boys is way underestimated. Um, but right there, there's 50 million Americans. If, if you're talking 25% of women and 5% and of men, that's 50 million Americans that have been molested as underage boys or girls. Yeah. So this is a huge problem that we have to deal with. And it's difficult to know how many kids are trafficked, but I've seen some numbers that look relatively strong that indicate like 300,000 kids are trafficked in the United States. And where there's a misnomer with people is that they think that like they're Mexican kids or Eastern European kids, that's not the case. 85% of children that are trafficked in America are American children. No matter where you're watching Sean Ryan show from, if you get anything out of this, please like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly, share this everywhere you possibly can. And if you're feeling extra generous, please leave us a review on Apple and Spotify podcasts.